Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to vote in the poll and like and subscribe for better gas mileage. Maybe. Today we're building the prince, or king, spoilers, of Lucius, Noctis from Final Fantasy XV. Noctis is like a lot of guys in their early 20s, wayward, struggling to measure up to society's expectations, and dealing with a hostile invading army. At least he's got his boys and a sweet ride. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to be able to summon weapons at will. Next, we need to be able to bounce over to those weapons, depending on how advantageous it is. Finally, we'll get some spells that will be dangerous for our enemies and possibly our allies too. For stats, we're going to be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll if you want, we just need to make sure our dexterity and wisdom scores are up to snuff. Noctis is kind of an all-arounder, so we'll start with dexterity as it covers finesse weapons, ranged weapons, and armor class. Next up, intelligence. This is going to be our primary casting modifier, so we need a pretty high. Speaking of casting modifiers, wisdom needs to be 13, so so that'll come next. Plus, Noctis and his buddy spend a lot of time camping. Strength after that, you'll need it to be higher if you want to use some of those big boy royal arms. Charisma next, he's not the best conversationalist, but he's cute, so that's nice. Finally, we're going to dump Constitution. This is how we're going to compensate for the royal arms draining your HP. I've heard of Matt Mercer's Blood Hunter, but I'm only using official Wizards of the Coast stuff, so this is how we're going to do it. Noctis is a human variant. Humans get a feat. We'll go with the athlete feat. This gives you plus one to strength or dexterity. Go for strength. You can stand up with five feet of movement instead of half, and and climbing doesn't cost you any extra movement, and you can jump with only 5 feet of run up instead of 10. This is one of those builds that doesn't really need a lot of feats, and this one gives us a small ability bump and some things to keep us mobile. Use your 2 points to round up strength and dexterity, take acrobatics for your skill of choice, and the noble background for history and persuasion proficiency. We'll start off as a revised ranger. This is in an unearthed arcana online, not in the player's handbook. You can grab 3 skills from their list, take athletics, stealth, and survival to help you hunt monsters. First ability you get is favored enemy, letting you pick a type of creature you specialize in taking out. I'd say monstrosity fits the bill for most of what you fight early game, but an argument could be made for humanoids or beasts as well. You get plus two to damage rolls when you hit them with an attack, and have advantage on investigation and survival checks to track them down. You're also a natural explorer, which lets you ignore difficult terrain, you have advantage on initiative rolls, and advantage on attacks against creatures that haven't acted in initiative yet, so you can really kick the fight off strong. Warping over to fighter now, first level fighters get a fighting style. Pick duelist if you want to use smaller weapons, great weapon fighting if you want to use bigger weapons, and archery if you want to use ranged weapons. Spoilers, we're going to be getting another fighting style from Ranger, and you can't take great weapon fighting there, so take it here if you want it. You also get Second Wind, which lets you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action, helping mitigate your low HP a little. Second level fighters get Action Surge, letting you make an extra action once per long rest. Use this to kick things off with advantage for two attacks with your Natural Explorer. Third level fighter can choose a Martial Archetype. Eldritch Knights get Weapon Bond, letting you perform a ritual on a weapon that lets you summon it back to you as a bonus action. You can also learn two Wizard Cantrips. Shocking Grasp is a melee spell attack that deals 1d8 lightning damage on a hit and prevents the target from making reactions. Ray of Frost is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d8 cold damage and slows the target's movement by 10 feet per round. For your first level spell, Absorb Elements lets you gain resistance as a reaction to cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage. The next time you make a melee attack, you add 1d6 damage of that type to the attack. Burning Hands deals 3d6 fire damage to creatures that fail dexterity save within a 15 foot cone from you or half to those that succeed. And for another lightning spell, Witch Bolt is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d12 lightning damage on a hit. You can hold it for up to a minute and don't have to reroll the attack on the next turn as long as you're maintaining your concentration, so just keep shocking people until they stop coming up. Warping back to ranger now, second level rangers get a fighting style, like I said, pick what you want depending on how you want to play, but I'm a fan of duelist and archery. You can also choose two spells from the ranger list. Zephyr Strike lets you move without getting hit by opportunity attacks for up to a minute depending on your concentration. You can end it early and add an extra d8 force damage with an attack, and increase your movement speed by 30 feet for that round. This is a really weird spell with a bunch of weird conditions. I'd also grab Cure Wounds, which heals 1d8 plus your wisdom modifier, no guarantee your DM will be giving you potions. We're multi-classing spellcasters here, and Eldritch Knight is one of the more complicated ones. Page 165 of the player's handbook gives you a table for multi-classing caster options. Every three levels of Eldritch Knight gives you another multi-classing caster level, and every two levels of Ranger. So at this point, you're at level two. Keep track of this as the build goes on. Third level Rangers gain primeval awareness, letting them determine if there are any of their favorite enemy within five miles of them, and communicate simple ideas with animals. You can also choose a Ranger Conclave. The Horizon Walker is perfect because it lets you warp everywhere, eventually. You'll start off with the Detect Portal, which helps you find portals within one mile of you per long rest. There's also Planar Warrior, which lets you pick a target with your bonus action and deal an extra 1d8 force damage to them with your attack. It also turns the rest of your damage into force damage, which is great if something resists the standard slashing, piercing, or bludgeoning damage. For your spell, you get protection from evil and good. This gives a creature you touch protection from aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. Those creatures have disadvantage on attack rolls against your buddy, and the same buddy has advantage on saves against being frightened, charmed,
charmed or possessed by those creatures. Not really sure if this totally fits Noctis, but there's better stuff on the way. Fourth level rangers get an ability score improvement. I'd invest in dexterity, but if you're using big weapons, go for strength. Kind of up to you. Similar to our Sora build, you can kind of customize this one like you would in the game. Fifth level rangers get an extra attack, letting you attack twice instead of once as your action. You can also learn second level spells. You get Misty Step for free, letting you teleport 30 feet as a bonus action. I'd recommend grabbing Long Strider from the first level. It gives you an extra 10 feet of movement per round. Noctis is all about moving fast. Sixth level rangers get greater favored enemy, bumping up your extra damage to plus four, giving you advantage on saving throws against spells and effects that that monster creates, and you can pick an additional type of creature. I'd go for constructs. You tend to run into a lot of magic tech enemies. Seventh level horizon walkers get ethereal step which lets you cast the etherealness spell once per long rest as a bonus action meaning that you can move into the border ethereal plane you can't be hit by things in the material plane and can move through walls and move up and down with half your movement speed this only lasts until the end of your next turn instead of the eight hours that etherealness typically lasts which is fair that's a seventh level spell you can also grab another spell healing spirit is an area of effect healing spell that occupies a five foot cube for up to a minute depending on your concentration as long as it's up creatures that run through it get 1d6 healing and you can move it 30 feet as a bonus action it's pretty good. Eight level rangers get fleet of foot, which lets you dash as a bonus action. You also get another ability score improvement, depending on what you want to do. Invest in strength or dexterity. I personally recommend dexterity, but you do you. Ninth level rangers get third level spells. As a horizon walker, you get haste, which does a bunch of things. Target you choose gets plus two to their AC, advantage on deck saves, double movement speed, and an extra action per round for one minute. Keep in mind when this ends, you can't take actions or reactions for one round. You get a little bit tired. For your spell of choice, grab lightning arrow. This is a bonus action that turns a piece of ammunition into a bolt of lightning. Roll a regular ranged attack with it, but the attack deals 48 lightning damage when it hits or half when it misses. Additionally, whether you hit or miss, creatures within 10 feet make a dexterity save of 8 plus your wisdom modifier and your proficiency bonus. Failing that, they take 2d8 lightning damage or half as much on a success. 10th level rangers can hide in plain sight, meaning that if you take the hide action and don't move on your turn, enemies have a negative 10 to their perception checks to see you. It's great for hunting prey. It's nice to take the enemy down before they can see you. 11th level horizon walkers get that real warp strike or distance strike in D&D turn. This lets you teleport 10 feet before each attack, and if you hit two different creatures, you can make a third attack with another creature. This is great for moving around the battlefield and consistently whittling down everyone's HP. 12th level rangers get an ability score improvement. Start throwing some points on your intelligence modifier. We'll be using intelligence for most of our spell attacks and saving throws. If you haven't noticed, most ranger spells are utility. Warping back to fighter now, 4th level fighters get an ability score improvement. More intelligence, we literally just talked about why. Spells, we need them. 5th level fighters get nothing because we took an extra attack from ranger whoops. 6th level fighters get an ability score improvement start investing in your secondary attack modifier strength or dexterity whichever one you haven't invested in so far noctis can use whichever weapon he gets his hands on so so should you seventh level eldritch knights get war magic this lets you cast a cantrip and then make a weapon attack as a bonus action so you can shock and grasp someone and then smack them up we've also been ignoring some spells that's because i'm more focused on the second level spell slots from eldritch knight grab shadow blade this summons a magical sword that deals 2d8 psychic damage it's finesse meaning you can use your dexterity modifier for the hit it's light meaning you can hold a weapon in your other hand and it can be thrown which means that well you can throw it when you use this sword in dark or dim light your attacks have advantage this is our royal arms it's a bigger weapon that deals more damage especially if you bump it up to seventh level making it deal 5d8 psychic damage per hit you can also grab agonizer's scorcher it creates a 30 foot line that forces dexterity save deals 3d8 fire damage to those that fail and half as much to those that succeed finally snillock snowball swarm forces a deck save in a five foot radius sphere dealing 3d6 cold damage to creatures that fail and half to those that succeed Keep in mind these saves apply to friendly creatures as well, so get Prompto and friends out of there before you go throwing these spells. Our capstone is going to be the 8th level fighter, giving you an ability score improvement. Round off anything odd here, specifically focus on dexterity and strength, we want to be good with every weapon we can be. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how good of a build this is. First, you're good with any weapon in any situation. Ranged weapons, melee weapons, spells, you're set up to do all sorts of damage. You've also got great mobility options, letting you jump in and out of the fight as you see fit. Finally, you don't have to worry about being disarmed. With Weapon Bond and Shadow Blade, you're always ready for the fight. As far as weaknesses go, you need to be prepared to fight because your health is hovering around the 100 range. At level 20, a lot of things have power word kill, meaning you could be permanently dead in one action. Your spell levels are also pretty low. Sure, you can cast spells up to the seventh level, but the highest base level is third, and while they do scale, there's a reason the higher level spells are locked behind higher level casting levels they're better. Finally, as a noble, party might be expecting you to be a diplomat and your low charisma isn't going to get you very far. Thankfully, you're prepared for virtually every other situation. Warp around, hack around, slash around, shoot around, throw magic around, whatever it takes. Just remember to warp out regularly. The last king just died. You don't want to put Lucius through that again.
Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make new videos every week. People have been asking for anime pretty much since my channel started, and I need to give the people what they want. Vote in the poll for your favorite My Hero Academia character, Todoroki, Ochako, or Tokoyami. Come back Thursday if you're someone that loves Keanu Reeves, which I think is everyone, so just come back Thursday.